Resident Evil 4 definitely has one of the randomizers of all time, and if you've been a fan of this channel for a while, you'll know that I love making videos about it. This is why I started a series about a month ago where I try to speedrun the randomizer with only one weapon. A series that isn't much of a series until now. Welcome to the series, we have snacks to get comfy. There are 13 weapons in Resident Evil 4's arsenal, everything from pistols to shotguns and even handheld grenade launchers. But just how viable are each of these guns when used completely by themselves in a randomized setting? I wanted to find out, so I set out on a journey to try every single gun's viability with the enemy and merchant randomizer. Well, okay, I mean, mostly by itself. I'm still allowed to use grenades and the final rocket on the final boss, just because I don't want this to take like 12 years your heart out comment section. With that being said, I'll explain the rest of the ground rules. The randomizer will change out the enemy spawns for every enemy in the game. What was once a chicken can now be a Verdugo. And what was once a Verdugo can now still be a Verdugo. Man, I'm lucky. I will also be randomizing what the merchant has for sale and the price of each item. This means that important tools and upgrades that may be useful may not be available, such as the striker to do the dipping glitch, or larger inventories and heals. Last time I beat the game with only the Punisher, and right after I finished that, I was hungry for another. So I started up another seed, and this time I got the Matilda. Matilda, okay. We take those, we take those. The Matilda is an interesting gun because technically it's a new game plus weapon, but it comes without upgrades to start, and those upgrades are only unlocked once you beat the game once on that save file. This means that while the gun is good to start out, it wouldn't be able to be upgraded since this was this save file's first playthrough. It's also interesting because, as I would immediately remember in Disgust, you can't quick turn with the Matilda. Oh, you can't quick turn with the Matilda. That's right. That's fucking cringe. Quick turning is a common technique in RE4 speedrunning where you turn the camera before you aim, then press the aim button to snap Leon into shape and in the direction that you want. This makes movement much more smooth by allowing for fast, sharp turns in any direction. The Matilda, for whatever reason, doesn't let you do this. Why? Like actually why? It's the only gun that you can't quick turn with. It's fucking stupid. I knew for sure that this would get me killed eventually, but I had to just deal with it. In the previous challenge, I got the Punisher, as I said before. And the biggest problem with that run was that I couldn't get enough ammo to kill Salazar. In that run, I had to get super lucky and get a striker in the merchant so that I could do a Salazar skip by switching to 30 FPS and using the Dipman glitch. But this seed might not have the striker. And actually, getting a striker from the merchant was more rare than me going outside, so this is not something that I can rely on. This is an even bigger issue with the Matilda because it fires in three round bursts, causing it to absolutely bleed ammo. In tradition for this challenge, the village is just normal villagers once again. I swear I'm being scammed. What happened to like the JJs in the Dante race? I grabbed the shotgun to sell and so that I have something to quick turn with while I go about collecting as much handgun ammo as possible in 1-1. It's a relatively straightforward level. I just have to pass the entire Republican party on the way there to the next mission. And then I get to the first merchant. This time, I don't get the striker and realize that I probably won't be able to upgrade this time around. Am I going to be able to upgrade the Matilda? I have no idea. I've never used the Matilda before. No, am I ne I'm never going to be able to upgrade it? That's kind of cringe. The next room would be anything but simple. It has the infamous stealth chainsaws. When more than two chainsaw enemies are in a room, for some reason the audio just completely breaks finally making RE4 a horror game. I made this room a lot harder than I needed to be though, because I wanted to grab all of the ammo and nades possible. The next room was terrifying, as a Super Salvador lets me slip right past him through this doorway. The one after that would be kind of hilarious though, because apparently the knights were feeling chivalrous and didn't even attack me. I hope their fedoras come back from the dry cleaners in one piece. but chivalrous knights. This randomizer was all about saving ammo and running past as many enemies as possible. Just like Twitch chat, I also run away from my problems. But this seed was enabling me. Every single room in a village before nighttime was completely free. I could just run past everything without having to shoot a single shot. That was until I got to the Gigante boss fight. Ideally, I would get something like a regenerator or a Krauser, something that I could knife to death so I could save my ammo. I was not that lucky this time around and got a Garador. Thankfully, the Matilda fucks, more than your stepdad at least, and its default firepower was enough to take him down in just a clip or so. I would eventually start getting harder enemy spawns in later rooms. Actually, Ashley started spawning in and at the start of every room and that made the game a whole lot harder. Cabin is the next big hurdle as always and I got a big scare. 
I thought I was gonna be all shield guys once again. Oh, don't tell me it's shield guys. Not again. Thank fuck it wasn't though. It was robe fools. Thankfully, they go down really fast. One or two bursts to the head. The survey said you're dead. They're afraid of me. Shit, I'd be afraid of me too. Lots of those enemies would drop handgun ammo too. Because it's the only type of gun in my inventory due to the lack of striker, I would almost exclusively get handgun ammo drops. I actually was almost reimbursed totally for all of my handgun usage in the cabin. It was really easy too. I just picked them off one by one and blew them into little bits. I was even able to hand count all 40 kills that are required to end the cabin. Well, I tried. I actually can't count that high. Yeah, I got one more. That should be it. It's like really... Okay, yeah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> the Mendez boss fight looked like it was going to be a problem. I wanted to save my ammo, but this big baby was in the way. Thankfully, I could combine two of the best mechanics in all of gaming into one special move. Quick time events and button mashing. The second phase was two more Mendez, but it was over in an instant. A flash in the pan. That was perfect. Castle would ramp up quite a bit more. As anyone who has seen my races with Moody or Mr. Mavrioli would know, my strategy for these runs is usually to try and run past as much as possible. And while this seed was giving me a green light for all of early game, once we got into the castle, I would pay for my hubris. Having Ashley with you makes running past everything a lot harder, especially since the enemies are random. Telling exactly what they're gonna do is a little bit difficult, especially when every day I see some new meme in this godforsaken game, like this scythe guy throwing a scythe backwards. Dude, what? He threw that directly backwards. Waterhall is when I realized something was a little bit off. The Matilda is like too good. Like, it does so much damage that the three round burst will sometimes instantly kill even late game enemies if they're all headshots, which is cool, unless you want to kick them for crowd control. Okay, the Matilda actually kind of fucks. But it like fucks too hard, you know? I just want to one tap these guys so I can kick them, but I can't kick them their head explodes. Kind of makes it hard to do crowd control, you know? I actually died a few times here because an enemy I wanted to kick got the best brain of his life by my shiny silver gun. You can technically shoot one bullet at a time with the Matilda, as I would do a lot in the second phase of Waterhall, but it's actually really difficult. You have to hold the fire button for a really short amount of time. So short that only one button comes out before you let it go. To do this game running at only 60 FPS and dropping frames all the time, Sometimes it's simply not possible to shoot just once. The next few rooms of the game would be fairly straightforward. Just your usual randomizer shenanigans. Just run past most things and only kill what you absolutely have to. As well as picking up handgun ammo on the way. My inventory was getting really tight though. Oh my God. I had a ton of grenades and I was using them when I needed to, but man, I was fuller than a fat kid at McDonald's. This problem would not be remedied anytime soon by the merchant though, as he would not sell me any larger attach cases. Can you sell me a fucking bigger case, dude? The famous knight's room where enemies can just, for some reason, walk through walls, has the most required kills out of any room in the game, and I was tired of playing it safe. I let it rip like a Beyblade in this bitch, and blew through almost all of my handgun bullets. A mistake? Maybe. But a chatter would give me an amazing idea to get some more ammo. So the merchant didn't have any upgrades for the Matilda, but the Matilda itself did show up in the merchant for a 70,000 steep pesetas. But I could shoot all of my bullets out of my Matilda, sell it, and rebuy it to get a full clip. A nice 35 extra bullets. And because I had nothing else to spend my money on, why not do it? Sell the Matilda, buy it, and get, and get the upgrades. Does Will he have... That's actually fucking five head. Will he have upgrades for the Matilda if I buy it from him? He is selling it, so I could sell it and rebuy it to get more ammo at the very least. Sometimes the fastest way to do things is to wait it out and have it take forever. I got Super Salvador instead of Verdugo for the Verdugo fight. This means that the Super Salvador has 30,000 health and a rocket does only 10,000. So there is no way I'm gonna have enough tools to be able to kill him. The gas tanks usually do a three times damage multiplier to Verdugo, but it doesn't apply to any of the other bosses that could take his place. And because I didn't have the striker, I wasn't gonna be able to skip the double gigante fight. So I would need ammo for that, 
and then right after that have to fight Salazar. I knew from my prior run that with the Punisher at 1.7 damage a shot, I needed to have 150 bullets to kill Salazar. So with 2.0 damage on the Matilda, I should only need about 125 bullets. If I didn't have at least that much by the time I got there though, I would be soft locked and unable to finish the seed. For the time being, I had plenty. Plenty of nades too. And that would make the double gigante fight a breeze. A wild demonstration of skill. I tried to quick turn with the Matilda. Okay. Because I was trying to save more ammo and because it's faster, I did the other version of minecart skip. If you don't play on PC at 60 FPS, this is the way you'll have to do it. Simply line up on the third cart and step back here and jump when the barrels in the back pass by the pillar on the left. This should drop you out of bounds and you can walk to the end. At least that's how it's supposed to work. I'm a bit rusty. It's easy though, I swear. Bro, oh, I got scammed again. A few minutes later. Crows. Well, that makes this room easy. Once I finally got past the insane barrage of archers on the elevator, it was time for the moment of truth. Would I be able to kill Salazar? This tanky fucker has so much health, and because I only have the Matilda, I can't skip the boss. I went in with 202 bullets and left with about 100. The Matilda does about 2 damage per bullet and so it took about 125 Matilda shots unupgraded to kill the boss. Nice. I would once again sell the Matilda and rebuy to get more ammo, but at this point all I had to do was run to the end. The final hurdle was basically over. In fact, the randomizer only gets easier from here. I do island skip and make my way towards the very last merchant that gets new things. I am really hoping for a case upgrade because at this point, that's all that can really help me. Instead, however, I got the striker. Red nine. Striker. Based. I had given up hope. I would never see my beloved again. And then in my darkest hour, it appeared to me. But my inventory was full. If I wanted to fit this bad boy, I was going to need to make some serious life changes. I uninstalled DoorDash, stopped eating McDonald's, and went to the gym four days a week. Then I started to go to church. This run was blessed, and I was going to be ripped by the time I finished it. I slimmed down on nades and squeezed that bad boy in there, Dipman running into the sunset. Also, can I please ask why this room always has Krausers in it? I thought this was supposed to be a randomizer, man. The shutter room, I could have just simply ran past, but my brain was so used to not having the dimming glitch at this point that I completely forgot that you could just run through it. So I tried to do the variation of the no mercy strategy where you use frag grenades to kill the enemies quickly. It didn't work uh, because they weren't dynamite guys. I wasted a ton of time here for no reason. And after I finished them off with the Matilda, I was once again out of ammo. I was worried about this, so I went back and backtracked into the Krauser room to get some more handgun ammo. It would die a few times in the process. I've actually never gone through this room backwards before. I was trying to dodge. Yeah, I guess I'm not grabbing that. The strategy used for Wrecking Ball Room is something that I've done quite a few times on video, but I don't think I've ever actually properly explained it. Essentially, the way it works is that when you're on empty because you threw your last grenade, you can then aim at Ashley with the knife and then hold down the aim button. Ashley will duck and cower like she should, but then you can actually let go of the knife button and continue to hold down the aim one. Ashley will still cower even though you're no longer threatening her. She will never stop cowering as long as you hold down aim. If you make her do this right before the drop down in the wrecking ball room, you can block the new enemies from spawning in with Ashley's body. Then you can activate the wrecking ball before the enemies spawn. Once behind the wall, you can let her come to you and the enemies will spawn in, but they won't be able to see you or Ashley allowing for you to just entirely sit on the other side safely and they won't see you. This is a perfect strategy if you don't have much ammo or you need to save your ammo. Once we get to the truck, my worst nightmare came true and I ran out of ammo, dying. This is one of the slowest deaths in the whole game. I would make sure it didn't happen again though. The dimming glitch would greatly speed up the late game, just zooming past everything until I got to 5-4, where I would get completely ass blasted by archers and once again run out of ammo. Why are you invulnerable? I actually was basically completely out of resources when I got to the final boss, so I had to learn how to knife his leg eyes. It wasn't as hard as you might think though. In the end, I beat the randomizer in 3 hours and 12 minutes, one of my faster randomizer completions, especially considering I was without dimming glitch until island. I think ultimately, I got really lucky with the enemy spawns in the first half of the game, 
and my hoarding of ammo paid off in those mid-game sections. The Matilda was basically a, just an ammo hog, but at least it did good damage. Keeping enough ammo for the whole game was hard, but if I had played it as safe as I did at the beginning for the whole time, I don't think I would have had any problem at all. Thanks so much for watching and stay stylish.